In the previous video, we saw how to insert, modify, and delete a record from a business component corresponding to a single level transaction. Now we'll find it easy to implement the following requirement for the travel agency's back office. Suppose that at some point, the need arises to create a special category, tourist site, which groups together very popular tourist attractions in a city, regardless of whether they were previously categorized as monuments, museums, and so on. Let's start with something a bit simpler. Suppose that the agency needs to change all the attractions in Beijing that used to be of monument type. So now, they're of this new category. We are asked to do it by code, so as not to do it interactively, one by one through the work with screen. Here we only see two attractions in Beijing, but there could be many more, and the user could miss some of them. We'll use the procedure we saw. We delete everything we've coded to start over. Since we'll have to enter a new category, we must create its business component. And now, define a variable of that data type. Since the ID is auto-numbered, we don't give it a value, but we do assign it to the category name element and insert it. If all went well, the next step will be to recategorize all of Beijing's tourist attractions that have so far been monuments. Then, we must run through those attractions with a for each command, where the city is Beijing, and the category is monument. In each iteration of the for each command, we'll be positioned on one of those attractions. And what we do is to load it in the variable attraction. Then we change the category for the new one. Note that here we're retrieving the value given by the database when the category was inserted. The ID is auto numbered. Finally, we change the record in the database, triggering all the transaction rules as we saw. Finally, we commit. We'll invoke this procedure from a screen. So we remove the output file rule and leave the call protocol and the main program properties with their default values. We're going to create that screen, that panel. It'll be an object, of which we'll speak later, of the web panel type. Let's call it that. Here we see its web form, which is empty. This is what users will see on their screen at runtime in their browser. From the toolbox, we drag a text block type control. It'll show the user a message, a text, in the panel. We include this caption, which indicates that what it's going to do is to insert the category tourist site and change Beijing's attractions. And we drag a button, which will have an associated event of the name do. And we're going to add another button to undo the action. We want to program the code that will be executed when the user clicks on do. Then, we see that the web panel has an events section, which is where we're going to specify that code. Here we'll invoke the procedure that we had created. We can type it directly, or better yet, to avoid errors, drag it from the KB Explorer. And then add the parentheses. Let's give it a try. F5. Let's look at the categories we've entered so far in the database. There are these three. Now, let's look at the tourist attractions. We're going to reinsert the Chinese wall, which we had deleted in the previous video. 
if we filter by country China, we see that we have here the two attractions of Beijing, which are of monument type. So, they must be replaced with the new tourist site category when we execute the event code of the web panel. We'll refresh the screen, and we see that the category has been effectively changed. It was previously created in the table. As we mentioned in the previous video, updates by means of business components can be made in almost any object that accepts code. Thus, we could have written directly here the code we had in the procedure, without the need to invoke any other object. We define the variables, simply category and attraction, business components, and that's it. We're going to program the code associated with the undo event, which is going to undo the previous operations. This is to say, delete the tourist site category, and at the same time, restore the Beijing attractions that were now tourist sites to the monument category. The code will look similar to this. We're running through Beijing's attractions in the tourist site category with a for each command. We're loading the attraction variable, business component, with each attraction found, and we're changing its category ID to monument. We update. And then we delete the category. We define a variable, category ID, to retrieve the identifier of the tourist site category in order to load that category into the business component and remove it. If everything goes well, then we make a commit, and otherwise a rollback. Why do we define this order, that is, to run through the attractions first and then eliminate the category, and not the other way around? What if we wanted to remove the category first and then change that same category of tourist attractions? Obviously, it won't be allowed. Referential integrity will fail because we'll be trying to remove a category that has associated records, so the order can't be reversed. Let's try it. We click on Undo Note that the category has been effectively deleted, and if we go to the attractions and filter through China, we can see the monument category has been restored for both attractions. Now let's create another panel to remove all the information from the category table and the entire table of tourist attractions. Once again, the web form is empty. We'll drag a button we associate the remove data event to it, and we code it this way. And once again, the order has to be like this. We couldn't just run through the categories and eliminate them, and then go on to eliminate the attractions. Referential integrity would fail. Let's try it. We click on remove data. And now if we open the information in the category transaction, we see that it's empty. The same happens if we go to see the attractions. Finally, we send the changes we made to the server.